July 22nd, uh, 2010, I was in the process of doing my job as a combat engineer. I was trying to clear a danger area of an IED when I stepped on the IED and that resulted in double above the knee amputations of both legs. I was in the hospital from July of 2010 until December of 2011. There weren't really any specific moments where I was overcome with grief after my injury. I just kind of acknowledged that this is a raw deal, you know, being a double above the knee amputee, it's not fun, it's not easy, it's not a good thing. But at the same time, I also accepted and acknowledged that the more energy I spend on realizing that the, the situation that I'm in is a bummer, the less energy I'm going to have to make the situation that I'm in as good as I can and turn it into a positive thing. And I kept that attitude the whole time. So when I was in the hospital, I was specifically working on what you would call recovery, going into physical therapy, getting surgeries, getting fixed up. It was kind of a team effort uh, between all the amputees and all the physical therapists to get everybody that was there through the recovery and on their feet as fast as possible and get them as adapted as they could. And that portion of my recovery lasted about a year and a half. I was interested in the Paralympics when I was still in my hospital bed right after being wounded. I was just kind of looking for ways that I could still train. And I knew a part of doing that would be having some sport that I could train for. And so I did a little bit of research and it turned out in the area there was a rowing program that taught adaptive rowing, they called it at the time. And I remembered that it was a sport that was included in the 2012 Paralympics. Once I read that, the idea kind of uh, was impregnated in my head. And so the rest is history. Being on the podium in 2012, there was a dichotomy of emotions. First of all, I was proud of myself, proud of my partner, and proud of our coaches and our whole support team for all the work that we had done and what we had accomplished training for 10 months and going from beginners to uh, Paralympic medalists. However, at the same time, we were bronze medalists and my goal had always been to win at the Paralympics. So while I was happy and I was proud, at the same time, I wasn't totally satisfied with it because uh, I, I was going for that win and we didn't quite get it. After the 2013 season, along with my brother, I rode my bicycle from Bar Harbor, Maine, all the way down to Richmond, Virginia, and then I went across to San Francisco, California, and then I rode down the coast to Camp Pendleton, California. Rob Jones is cycling from Maine to Southern California. 30 miles so far, just under 5,400 left to go, but this ride isn't about the destination, but rather the journey. My brother drove my support truck during my bike ride for 5,180 miles. It took me six months and I was trying to raise money for three veterans charities, the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, the Semper Fi Fund, and Ride to Recovery. And together with my, uh, my team, I was able to raise $126,000. Once I finished the bike ride, I decided I still wanted to do some kind of sport. And it just so happened that triathlon was making its Paralympic debut in 2016. And I figured since I had just rode my bike across America for six months, that triathlon would probably be a sport that I was most accustomed to. So I had started seriously training for a triathlon October of 2014 and we've been working ever since on my conditioning program. So in my category in triathlon, there aren't any other double above the knee amputees. There's certain things that I have to do that add on to my time. One aspect of triathlon that I had to learn was swimming technique, but luckily for me, swimming technique is very reminiscent of rowing technique, so I can kind of use that previous experience in order to work on the things that I'm weakest in and help me become the best that I can be. I mean, a lot of people say when they got hurt, their, their life was changed. And I don't really think that that's totally accurate because your life is just 
what happens to you. It's not what you want to happen to you, it's just what does happen. And you're not gonna get anything from wishing that your circumstances were different or wishing that something that has already happened didn't happen. I believe that the only way to have the best life that you can have is to accept what situation you are in and just do everything that you can in order to make your life what you want it to be and take that responsibility on for yourself. And as long as you do that, then you'll get what you want given enough time.